I want to start off by reading a little story I read in a book before, Faith Can Change Your World by Lester Sumrall. And this is the story he tells. It's like a parable. He says, suppose someone kidnaps a king's only son, the crown prince of the realm, and later the child is abandoned. A beggar finds and adopts the boy, having no identity of his, uh, no idea of his identity. Now the child of the king eats as a, as a beggar, clothes himself with filthy rags and begs from house to house. But suppose the king now uh, knows the young prince by a birthmark that establishes his identity beyond question. The royal father never gives up in his search for the prince. One day, the king hears that a child resembling his son lives in a distant city with a beggar. Arriving at the beggar's hovel, the king examines the child and finds him to be his son. The crown prince is washed and groomed. He's given a robe, a ring, and a place of authority in the kingdom. Although that boy was the son of the king, the crown prince had lived for years like a beggar because he didn't know who he was he didn't know his position of redemption a wonderful story a, a fictional story obviously but it, it proves the point that this king had a son the son was kidnapped and abandoned someone picked up the child a beggar felt compassion for the child raises the child the child ends up living a beggar's life clothed with rags eats very uh, poorly throughout his entire life but years down the line the king finds the child and is able to identify him because of a birthmark they wash him they clothe him in royal apparel his position changes overnight but for years he he dwelt and lived as a pauper when he could have lived in prosperity what was the difference it was because the child had no clue had no clue where he came from and had no clue what his inheritance meant for him because of ignorance, he was stifled in living his best life. There are three reasons the Christian is hindered in this dominion walk in life. Number one is ignorance. The Bible says, Paul said in Ephesians 1, I pray that the eyes of your understanding would be open so that you can see what is the hope of his calling and the surpassing greatness of God's power that's available to you. So Paul, people would have come to him and said, hey, Paul, I have this problem. I have this challenge. I have this difficulty. I need to be healed of this sickness. Paul wouldn't say, okay, well, let's just pray that God heals you. He would say, Father, I pray that you'd open up their eyes to see the surpassing greatness of God's power that's already been made available to these people in redemption. But because of ignorance, people are cut off. Oil undiscovered is an untapped resource. Uh, coal undiscovered is an untapped resource. You can be sitting in a house right now, under it is a, a, a reservoir of oil that you don't know is there, and you could be struggling to pay your bills, but under you, if you would just allow a company to dig uh, as you come into the knowledge of what's under you, you would have had untold riches and wealth, but because you didn't know it's there, you couldn't take advantage of it. The Word of God is the greatest untapped resource there is on planet Earth. Because though there is sufficient power to unlock victory in every single area of your life, because people don't know what belongs to them in redemption, they live as paupers when they're called to live as kings. You know, 1 Peter 2.9 says, you are now a royal priesthood. You're a chosen generation. You're a special possession called forth to proclaim the praises of whom who called you into his glorious light, who once were not the people of God, but now are the people of God, who once had not received mercy, but now have received mercy. But because of ignorance, because of a lack of knowledge, my people are destroyed. The Bible says that he that wanders from the way of understanding will rest in the assembly of the dead. If you don't understand your covenant rights from the word of God, you'll never walk in dominion. You'll always be hindered. You'll always struggle. But when you start to understand what redemption did for you, that you were like that, that beggar's child. You were clothed with rags. You were deprived by sin. You were impoverished. You were bankrupt. You had no power to, to conquer the devil's power. You had nothing in you to bring victory. There was nothing. There was unrest and distress. 
But when Christ died for you and rose again from the dead, he, the Bible says, he took us out of that horrible pit. He raised us up with Christ, made us to be seated in him in heavenly places that now in the ages to come, he might show to us the surpassing greatness of his power that's available to us who believe. Hallelujah. You have to write that in the comment section. I'm seated in Christ. I'm seated with Christ. I'm seated with Christ. Where Christ is, is where I'm at. So ignorance blocks people from operating in this dominion faith to unbelief. So it's one thing to know something, but you got to accept it and believe it as fact. You can't just receive it and discard it. You got to accept it and receive it as fact. The Bible says in Hebrews 3.19, they could not enter in to the rest because of their unbelief. God has a place of rest for you. God wants you to rest from that battle that you've been struggling, that depression, that anxiety, that distress of heart, that marital problem. God wants to bring you to a place of rest in your marriage, a place of rest in your body, a, bl- a place of rest in your finances but the bible says there's one force that will keep people out and it's not the devil they could not enter in because of unbelief mark 6 says though jesus wanted to do mighty miracles there they couldn't have mighty miracles uh, done in their town because of their unbelief because of their unbelief well that's why we're taking time to build build your faith faith is built on accurate knowledge so what's unbelief inaccurate knowledge when you don't quite know what belongs to you it's or if you do but it's not at a point where you actually uh comprehend it and understand it where you start to walk in it you can have true faith accurate knowledge is the is what builds people's faith up it's when you truly see from the scriptures you know genesis 4 uh, 13 14 and 15 god tells abraham lift up your eyes and look eastward northward southward and westward as far as your eye can see that's land that you can have so i talked about this on tuesday's broadcast seeing is believing and i'm not talking about seeing as in you see it manifest in, in in the natural realm i mean seeing it in the word of god where you understand it belongs to you that when you understand, you know, if someone left me an inheritance of a million dollars and someone tried to live in that million dollar house that, that was clearly left to me, I wouldn't just let him live there. I'd take the legal requ- uh, required steps, legally required steps to boot that guy out of the house so I can live in it. That's what accurate knowledge of the word does. It shows you Satan's boundaries. It shows you that the devil can come this far, but he can't go that much further. He can't come further. He can't encroach. He can't approach. The Bible says pestilence can stalk in darkness. Problems can stalk in darkness, but they can't come near me to the point where I'm defeated. Hallelujah. So faith in, or understanding rather, accurate knowledge of the word of God shows you Satan's boundaries where he's not allowed to come and touch. Where the, the extent of his, of his dominion r- relies. But some believers don't understand that. So they, he comes in like a thief, comes into their homes, puts sickness on their children, does whatever they, he wants to do, and they know, oh, this must be a natural part of life. No, it's not. Legally, redemption brings certain things to you. When those things aren't there in your life, you don't just sit back and relax and say, well, must not be God's will. You start to see that the devil's a thief. He tries to take what doesn't belong to him and truly belong. That's why it's proof. When the devil comes to steal health from you, it's proof that health belongs to you. But what do you do? You don't just sit back and relax, hope he leaves. Your accurate knowledge of the word that tells you by his stripes you're healed, that redemption paid healing for your body, paid for healing for your body, you rise up now with a violent faith. I refuse to be defeated in this area. I refuse to be sick. That's where people start to make violent proclamations. I refuse to be sick. I refuse to be afraid. I refuse to be defeated. I refuse to give up and quit. He that began a good work in me is going to complete it because I'm on the winning side. Faith empowers me to overcome not to under not to to be defeated to overcome and so when you understand that it produces a sense of violence where you don't put up with the devil's crap anymore you say enough is enough i'm not tolerating this thing anymore just like you don't tolerate sin why tolerate everything else sin brought you don't tolerate sin why tolerate satan why tolerate i want to bring you to a point of 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 holy 
aggravation, if that's even a word, a holy indignation, let's say that, a holy anger, to be aggravated in a holy way. Where there's this refusal to just, get, there's too many Christians that just are, are pushover Christians. They get laid flat by the devil. Never have a, a, a reaction to what the devil's trying to bring on their life. And as such, they live as more than conquered rather than living as more than conquerors. And then the third hindrance to sin, so ignorance, unbelief, three is sin. That's an obvious one. Sin lowers people. You can't ride high when you're brought low by sin. 